two-week sailing trip to Indonesia. So she also knows what sport can do. I think sailing is a sport, actually. What a long-term sport can do to your life. It must have been a very intense experience. Yes, very good. Well, I will not take it too long. Wendy, Thank you. please take the floor. 15 minutes, and after that, she will finish with a statement, and then we will have the debate. Thank you. Now, you've already stood up once this morning, but I'm going to get you all to stand up again, just for a moment. Yeah. You can all stand up, and I think my voice is loud enough without this. Yesterday, I noticed it was a fantastic day. Did everyone enjoy themselves yesterday? Learn a lot? Yeah. yeah. But what I noticed is, in the afternoon, people started to look a little bit tired. Yeah? Everyone has been sitting all day. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen for you today. So there's a lot of people in the room and not a lot of space, but we're just going to do a little activity. So you're all standing. The next thing I want you to do is put both arms out in front of you. Just like this. Yep. Now we're going to do just a little bit of moderate to vigorous activity. I'm going to put the microphone down so it doesn't make too much noise. I just want you to follow me. And it's just going to be five times. Fantastic. And now with your feet. Fantastic. It's always really nice to get a standing ovation even before you start. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you want to take a seat, if you don't want to take a seat though, remembering what Stuart said yesterday, if you would like to stand a little bit, there's plenty of room at the sides and at the back. Just because we have chairs in the room, it doesn't need, mean you need to sit down. Now, what I'm going to argue today is, in fact, sport is not for all. Now, as an athlete, a coach, an administrator and a lover of sport, it's quite hard to stand here and say sport isn't for everyone. And I think the challenge of conferences and congresses like this is we're not the ones we need to convince to be active. So how do we, who've been active all our lives, get the least active moving? What I'm saying is sport is not the way. <coughs> Now, I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes talking about what some of the evidence in Australia is telling us and what government is doing in relation to that and also what's occurring in the school and community sector. So I'm going to be speaking very fast to get through all that. Now, I come from a nation of self-professed sporting lovers. We used to think that meant the strong, athletic, bronzed Australian, but alas, what it increasingly means is a rotund person or, or child who sits in a comfortable chair with their remote in the hand. In fact, we're lovers of watching sport, not playing it. So regardless of what you or I might feel, the evidence is clear. Australia is much like other countries around the world and overall participation rates for both adults and children and time spent being sedentary are alarmingly high. Now, if I can get the people in the back row on either side to stand up for a moment, just the back row here and the back row here, just to stand. And if you have a look around and the people in the middle at the back, if you stand as well, that's about the number of children in Australia. So it's one in five who meet the physical activity guidelines. So only one in five children in Australia get 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity every day of the week. And if you double that, it's adults meeting the physical activity guidelines. Thank you. Feel free to sit or stand. <laughs> What we know is, that is despite years and years of investment. So in Australia, in 2014, so very recently, we did our first Active Healthy Kids report card, looking at 
all aspects related to children's involvement in physical activity. And I'm not proud to say we scored a D minus. So our overall participation rates for physical activity are pretty low. And thankfully, it wasn't just me that was concerned about that. There were lots of people and also government. So government did what government often does. They were alarmed at the data and so they poured money in. In fact, for one of our main programs, which was an after-school program, they said, what we'll do now is actually give that money to national sporting organisations so that they can work directly with school children. Four years later, 2018, these things take a while to work, so we didn't want to look at the data for a few years. The next report card, participation rates for children in Australia. What do you think we scored? D minus again. So despite that quite substantial investment directly into sport, our participation rates in fact hadn't changed. What had changed is the numbers of children involved in sport <coughs> had increased. Yeah, so that sounds like a great result. But in fact, I think what it shows is we're faced with the same issue. It's the old adage. We can get people who are active moving from informal <coughs> participation to formal participation. We can get them moving from sport A to sport B. But at the end of the day, that hasn't hit our objective. We haven't got the least active moving. And we heard yesterday, and I'm sure we've all heard it before, that in fact that's our greatest challenge, is not for us to become more active, but to engage those who previously haven't been engaged. In Australia, what the government have recognised after that investment is in fact we need to have partnerships outside sport. Not that sport isn't important. It has a range of places. And for that, it continues to be supported. But to continue along the path, despite the evidence that says, actually, participation levels are flat. And that's, we've had lots of investment. And to be fair, sport have been doing some fantastic work. There is a lot of innovation in sport, but it's not changing overall participation numbers. No matter how much we love it, no matter how much it's given to us, we are not the ones that we're talking about. And I think that's really important to acknowledge. In that environment, of course, some sports sometimes feel threatened. <coughs> They see a bucket of funding that has traditionally gone to them, then being opened up to other providers. But if we can focus always on what the evidence tells us and what is successful, then there's always opportunity. If you can amend things sufficiently that you deliver results, then you'll actually get the funding. Some sports are now working in partnership with physical activity providers, recognising that both in fact, have a place. What's also happened is that in shifting outside of sport and with physical activity providers, is the Australian government have recognised the importance of, importance of physical literacy as a foundation platform, as something that needs to be invested in. And through that, yes, children may continue into sport, but they will continue to be active and really it's through activity in all its forms. And I think it was Stuart yesterday who put up the definition, sport for all and whatever you call it. Um, it's about that. It's about the broader activity. That's what we're really trying to encourage people to do. Now, I'm going to get you to do one more activity. If you can just stand up. And I'm just going to get a helper here. So, Elliot, if you can come out here for a moment.
Just stand on my right. Okay, now just with your right hand in the air, if you can point your index finger. So like mine, point your index finger. And with your left hand, can't do this, with your left hand, put it out flat next to you. Now you're all standing in lines. I want you with your hand that is pointed, down in the palm of the person next to you. And if you don't have a person next to you, now's a chance to shuffle along and get some more movement. Find someone, that's it. Now when I count to three, I want the person whose hand is pointing down to try and pull it out before the person who has their flat palm grabs them. Are you ready? Yes. Uh, no, practicing. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> And this time I want you to just redo it. Just have a think. How can you improve your performance? Okay. Are you the one that managed to get away or did you get grabbed? The same? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> no, I was supposed to get you. So it's a really simple activity. It's also a really lovely demonstration of the elements of physical literacy. When you were thinking about how to make changes, reflecting on your own performance, so there's the, the physical skills involved. Did you adjust your reaction time, your speed? Psychologically, you had a lot of laughter, which is always Fabulous. Did you enjoy it? How did you feel about it when you weren't successful? Do you know the person next to you a little better now? <laughs> and of course, cognitively, what strategy and planning did you use to improve on your performance? So a very small activity, but part that mindful sort of reflection of activity, I think, is one of the foundations. And yes, all of this happen in sport. So I'm not for a moment suggesting it can't. What I am saying though is it doesn't happen in sport for everyone. The organisation that I work with, Blue Earth Foundation, is a, a national not-for-profit that works with children in schools. And we've been doing it for two decades, trying to build physical literacy levels. And we do that through physical activity, so a range of activities, coordination, balance, movement and games. And it's showing that kids are improving. So yes, their physical skills, yes, their academic performance, but also those elements we just talked about. So psychological, social, that's the feedback that both teachers, students and families are giving us. And I think one of the, the best ways to illustrate it is a young girl, Sula. She's eight years old. She's about this big. She's very overweight and she's very shy. And if you have a room of students and you're about to do an activity, she's the one in the shadows making sure that she doesn't get picked and she doesn't have to do anything. She has never, her teacher said, participated in a physical education or sport class. She's eight years old. After Blue Earth had been at her school for five weeks, she was there. She was there first. She had taught her little brother how to play some of the games and she had taught some of her family. When we asked her about what it means for her, and this is actually my favourite thing. She said, little eight-year-old Sula stood there and said, it makes me feel bold and brave. And if we can give that to children, if we can get children involved in physical activity any way, and they leave saying, I feel bold and brave, then I think we've done our job. 
what I'm saying to you today, and Sula is the best example. Sport is not for all. Movement is for everybody. Thank you. At least we could move a bit, and you finished with a very clear statement. Can you repeat it once more? Sport is not for all, but movement is? That's correct. For everybody. That's correct, yeah? You get it? Is it clear what Wendy means? Sport is not for all, but movement is for everybody. Now, for the people who arrive a little bit late, how does this work? One side agrees with the statement of Wendy. The other side does not agree. Let's say, for this statement, you are the ones agreeing with Wendy. So you are going to defend that sport is not for all, but movement is. You do not agree. So you have to think about <laughs> arguments against the statement of Wendy. We want to have an active discussion. So uh, the floor is yours, actually. Anyone who wants to start. Here, Janis, go ahead. And don't forget that you are a team. So when he has a good point, yes. help him. I give up. I don't find any good answer for that. <laughs> oh, that's so easy. Yeah, go back. Yeah, go back. Then you have to move to this side. Just <laughs> come to this side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let it here, please. Uh, I understand why sports is not for everybody, uh, because the sports are having the element of winning, like a competitions, even it's in a fair, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, it's, it's a fair sport, but yeah, like movement is for everyone, because there's no winning or lose, so it's really good for kids to, you know, Work on it. Yeah. So you agree that sport is. Yeah, but that's just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there anyone here? I think you should be more creative. It doesn't have to be your personal opinion. Eh? You can you can come up with some argument. I'll say something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually think sport. It's only because those people haven't had good experiences yet. But really, once we actually make sure sport is delivering what we know it can, then everyone can enjoy it. It can be for everyone. Anyone from your side? There should be. There should be. Otherwise, I think, yeah. Yes. You can say your name, by the way, so we get to know. Yes. <laughs> My name is Maya Khan. I'm from South Africa. Um, movement, anyone can do it. And you can do anything. It's not, there's no right or wrong answer. With sport, you have to have special skills, you have to train, you have to do all sorts of things. So movement is for everyone. Oh, bravo. Anyone from your side? Yes. Tadeo from Tanzania. Viva Africa. Make it strong. Uh, well, with me, I think also sport is for everyone. Because sport is part of the movements. Mm -hmm. That yeah. you do sport because you want to realize a certain movement. So I think sport also is part and parcel of uh, movement, and that sport is for all. Thank you. Good. Some other opinions. I'm going just to ask some people. I warned the people in the back. The people in the back will get the microphone. Uh, who was there earlier? Robert. Thank you very much for your work. Uh, I'm Robert from Hungary. I'm a bit late, so I should get up. Uh, yes. Actually, I totally agree with the lady from South Africa. So I also think that. To me, movement is a bigger circle. Sport is just a part of the movement, I think. So, we are right. You are not really right. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, 
content relation is. But we, Tafisa, we are talking about sport for all. So should we change the name if sport is not for all? I don't know. Should we just call this movement for all? Or what's happening? If you cannot come up with anything, so sport is... So you say we, Tafisa, should change the name. <laughs> For all, because I, I must say that I, I can represent both areas, and so I think that the problem is a, is a, is a good statement. It is a good statement. <laughs> okay. I saw somebody here. Yes. Oh, you are exactly in the middle. Ah, exactly. That's the best place. You can choose. It's difficult to say that whether I am against or for. I am uh, Ashish Paul from India, from Jalapur University. Uh, I am actually in favor of sports for all. Also, but my position actually, I it's very difficult to say that whether I am against or not. But I am in favor of sports for all because for our biological existence, we are bound to do some specific movement, and that intensity of that particular movement and the gradual progression of that movement automatically, considering our age progression, that is growth and development of pattern, should indicate that. But if we consider sports for all, that means it provides some greater opportunity beyond that level of movement, that is the some social qualities also. If we consider the positive continuum, there is uh, uh, cooperation, there is mediation, arbitration, etc. And in negative, uh, negative continuum, it starts from competition. That is conflict, then rivalry, etc. etc. So sports actually provide us some uh, movement in the basic level and as well as to learn something regarding the uh, rules, regulations, regarding the, uh, at present, the business of sports is engulfed in every sector of the world, actually. So it provides some knowledge also how to learn something more to do our professional business in future and earn money for our livelihood. So I think sports must be for all. Thank you very much. Now it's getting all okay. kinds of yes. good. <laughs> The challenge that is being made is for the FISA, because I believe sports is for all, depending on the interest, the motivation, and the support. And it is more of a challenge to the FISA to make sure that everybody is engaged in sport, rather than it is a period for everyone to say that it's not for everyone. So I think it's more of the FISA being challenged by the statement, because we believe that sport is really for all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't forget to applause for your, for, yeah, for your, for your team. <laughs> and I think sports is for all. That's because, you know, what is sport and what is movement? It's just a definition by human. Yes? It's just a noun. It's a word created by us. Yeah? But what is sports? You know that, for example, soccer. You know, um, I think someone thinks sports is not for all. I think soccer is a sport and you need skills, you need field, you need everything, and then you can play soccer. But actually, if even for the kids, he has no skills, he has no field, he can just kick the ball in the street, but it is also sports. So for me, I think sports is for everyone. Movement is also for everyone. Yeah. There's no line for the two words. Thank you very much. This brings me to, uh, I always had a discussion with a former colleague in Tafisa, Erika Heikilelio. Because when I cycle to my work, it's 30 kilometers, and back it's 60 kilometers. She says, when you go by bike to your work, it's not sport. But when I go around 60 kilometers from home to home, then it is sport. I think that's a really strange thing of definition. So if I use it for a purpose, it's not sport anymore. But anyway. Here it was. This is the last comment for this round. After that, we will go to the next speaker. Thank you. Good morning, my learned friend from India and from Japan uh, talked about sports for all. I just want to conclude by just saying one thing. The world-famous, renowned scientist Stephen Hawking had moment and he did a great job. I conclude my speech. Thank you. <laughs> Good, now, this is a little bit difficult to conclude. We started with everybody was on this side, more or less. And the first speakers from this side joined your side. They agreed sport is not for all. But I think at the end we moved towards movement is more than sport. But sport can also be more than movement. And we have other kinds of sport. We have chess, we have e-sports. There are all kinds of different ways. Or like 
uh, the comments, sorry, I don't remember your name, uh, even the small activities you can include in sport. So we should not change, let's conclude that, we should not change the team of Tavisa, sport for all, but it's a challenge for all of us to make it possible for everybody to join sport in the way he or she wants and can do it. For me, that would be the conclusion of this discussion. Can I have something? Oh, sorry, next round, next round. <laughs> you will have two more chances. The difficult task for Wendy is to choose one speaker who had, in your opinion, the best contribution. <laughs> it's, it's difficult, and given um, we are all sport for all, and so we are actually using a broader definition. I think um, the woman over here who was basically saying to, um, if you can stand um, and come over here, because yeah, no, no, please. Um, it's difficult to draw the line, but I guess the, the point that we need to be aware of, and it was made yesterday, if we're trying to encourage people to be active, we need to think about the language we're using. And for them, rather than us, perhaps sport is not for them. Thank you very much. It's not a big prize, it's just an empty book, so you can write a book <laughs> with your own thoughts about sports. Okay, thank you very much. Very good. Now we will go to the next speaker, and we know the name is Keith, because we have two more speakers and they are both Keith. Um, the second speaker is Mr. Keith George, he's from... Joseph, yes, sorry, Joseph. <laughs> I was told don't mix it up all the time, and now I am still mix it up. And the Secretary General of Canada, so of the Olympic Committee of the Caribbean region, and he will give us a very uh, interesting input. And you know now how it works. So listen carefully, try to come up already with some ideas after he's been speaking, because you will be able to use them in the discussion afterward. Yesterday, I was looking through, reading through his immense CV, so it's uh, all the things he did in his life so far, it's too much, because then I will take half an hour to read everything he has been doing in his life. I think very much experience. If you want to know more about all the things he has been doing in his life, please talk to him in the coffee break, because I cannot repeat everything in here. I wrote some things down, but it's better to ask him himself. Keith.